Okay, I'm back. Um, I know I just did the unboxing and a, a quick little overview of this device. I noticed something very interesting that may be of interest to you with if and when you purchase this Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. Okay, so if you've had an Android device in the past, you know setting up your device you don't have to sign in, basically. Um, I'm not sure if Apple has changed it, but with Android devices, all I would do, and this is the first home screen you'll see. Well, actually, this is the welcome screen, right? This is something completely new that I've never seen before and in probably 10 plus years on Android, right? So you go through the setup process. You obviously agree to all that. Now, you select your Wi-Fi, or you don't have to. But I did. So normally in the past, you can just fly through the setup process. You don't have to sign in. You don't have to enter a SIM card. You don't, you don't even have to sign into Wi-Fi. You can just literally fly through the setup process. Next, 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 next. Boom, get to the home screen, right? Okay, with this one, very interesting. So, signed into Wi-Fi. Now, it stops you. You can't go any further. This is what, the second or third step in the setup process? You absolutely have to either set up a eSIM on this device or you have to insert a active SIM card in this device just to move on to the next step. As you can tell, there's no skip or there's no move forward. The only options... Let me, let me move this up. The only options you have are uh, scan QR code from the service provider, basically setting up an eSIM with a QR code, transfer SIM from another device. So if you have a eSIM currently active um, on another um, foot on another device, whether it be an iPhone or another Android device, you can transfer the one you're currently using into this phone. This one would be setting up, the very top one would be setting up a brand new eSIM. Your carrier will email you um, a QR code and you just scan it, boom, and it sets up your service. Third option is insert SIM card into this phone, a physical SIM card. You can insert it into the phone or you can search for, search for an eSIM again, which I'm not really sure what that is, but let's now, I, I kind of got stumped here and was kind of wondering, huh, that's weird, and I'm showing my wife. Um, okay, so it says, and I want to try I want to try something while I'm recording. And again, I haven't tried this before. This is all brand new to me, so we're going to kind of learn together real quick. I have, a, I have a no eSIM found. Okay, I have a, my active T-Mobile SIM is in my Pixel, and I don't want to take it out because... I don't want to go turn my chat off and my RCS messages because sometimes they should have a fix now. But sometimes in the past, when you before you pull your SIM card out of an Android device, you have to go into your Google messages. You have to go into the settings and you have to turn off your chat. If you do not turn off your chat before you pull your SIM card in your current device, you, ris you run the risk of messing up your Google chat um, and the read and, and write. Um, the read options to see when you send a text if the other person has read it. That's the Google chat. You run the risk of damaging that somehow in the system. Uh, I think they've gotten better over the years. But if you pull your current SIM, your current active SIM, out of a um, current device, you have to turn off chat and messages. Now, let's see. If I went to insert SIM card into this phone... So it'll say, look, to set up your phone, insert a SIM card from your service provider. Now, well, I'm going to try something. This is not my, I have a throwaway SIM card, T-Mobile SIM card that I'm going to try to insert in here and see what happens. We can test it out together. Transfer SIM from another device. Hit that one. It says, after you transfer the SIM, whoa. After you transfer the eSIM to this phone, you'll no longer be able to use it on your old device, okay? And then, we'll see now, 
it'll transfer SIM from another device. Now, it, it's actually asking for an eSIM. I don't know why it's just saying regular SIM because you would transfer an eSIM. And then scan QR code. <clears throat> I want you to scan a QR code. So, or enter activation code, right? So what we're going to do is, let's go back. I'm going to try. Now, I don't know what this is going to do. So let's hope I don't mess anything up. Let me, I have an old T-Mobile sim uh, that I'm going to throw in here. I'm not sure it's the best idea, but uh, you want to see what happens, right? So let's see. Where is an old... I got it right around here. Just bear with me just for a second. I'm kinda, I did this video on the fly. I didn't really plan to do this, but I was just trying to set up the device and... And uh, I couldn't believe I couldn't, you can't go any farther. Like, what the, now there's going to be some moves here because I need to move this tripod. So bear with me. I apologize. Keep all my sims. Look, check this out. I got a bunch of sim cards in there from all different carriers. Now, I used to sell phones. Well, I still do, but. Um, Whenever you get an old used phone that you want to sell or flip, sometimes, and you, I got to get them in auction, sometimes the leftover SIM card would still be in there. So I just collect them. I didn't even throw them away. All right, but I do need a SIM ejector tool. Damn, I just took the other one to the uh, kitchen. Uh... Oh, wait, I got, I got one in here. Sorry. Stupid. So this is not my... T-Mobile SIM. Again, my active T-Mobile SIM is in my Pixel. So, I let's just see if you can insert any SIM. We'll use this as a test video. You may be able to get away with just entering any SIM in there, right? So, now, preferably, it should probably be from your carrier because what's going to happen is once you insert a T-Mobile SIM, let's, uh, let's sprint. Once you enter a T-Mobile SIM or Verizon SIM or an AT&T SIM, your phone is going to reboot. It'll ask you to reboot because what it's going to do, it's going to download car the carrier services in the background onto this device so it can know what bands, 5G, 4G, even 3G to activate in the device. Because if you put a T-Mobile SIM, but then you use a Verizon SIM, the device just needs to know what bands, what carrier services um, to download on the device. <clears throat> so let's see here. I know one of these is an active one and one of them is an old one. Verizon. Again, I apologize for not being, um, what's that upside down? AT&T for not being um, more organized, but I was just doing this on the fly. Let's Google Fi. Let's Google Fi, AT&T, let's put, damn, so I only have one T-Mobile SIM, so that must be it then, and an old Sprint SIM card, excuse me, okay, so let's put this T-Mobile, now it's a new one, it's R15, when you see that R15 on there, that's their newest, newest, I think it's fifth generation SIM card, nano SIM card. So it's got all the new, it's got all the new uh, chip technology here on the nano SIM. Damn, right there. It's okay, so let's do this. Let's just give it a try and see what happens. If you mess it up, you can always factory reset it and it'll go back to, no go back to like it's brand new out of the box. So. If you're going to try this at home as well, don't be worried that, oh, I'm going to mess something up if I do it wrong. No, you can just factory reset it, and it'll it'll go back to this screen, to the home screen, like nothing ever happened. However, I do want to find out what will happen if I put a SIM card in there that's not really mine. I mean, it's mine, but you know what I mean. The, my, the line I'm using, again, is in my Pixel. So let's put this in there. Yeah, because I just shot my last video just to, literally just a couple minutes ago. And I was trying to fly through the setup just to go to the home screen so I could sign in, get all my accounts on there, start the transfer process. 
And then it said, no, nope, you got to put us in. And I was like, what? I don't remember that. All right, so that's in. Let's see what happens. Insert sim. See? It says, service provider updated. Your phone will restart to configure features supported by your service provider. Okay. <clears throat> now, let's see if this can get us to the home screen. Because y'all are going to need to know this, whether... Let's say you're an experienced phone flipper, you buy and sell, buy and resell phones. You're going to need to know this um, because if you're, in fact, you're resetting a phone or you're trying to get it to the home screen to give it to the person that's going to buy it, um, you're going to not want, you're going to not to, you're going to not want to get stumped in the setup process because normally when I would um, sell phones, some, some people would uh, want it just to be on the home screen completely uh, wiped of all data from the previous user some would want it on this on this setup screen and I would just if they didn't mind I would just go through the setup process with them but if you're a reseller you're gonna to want to know this <clears throat> now if you put a Verizon sim in it'll ask to reboot and then you'll see the Verizon's low uh, boot logo if you do the Google Fi it'll show <clears throat> ask you to reboot and do the Google Fi logo so it's since I already signed into Wi-Fi it knows it's a T-Mobile SIM, so it's rebooting and it's actively downloading carrier T-Mobile carrier services in the background. It's going to store it on the uh, uh, carrier services app in here on the internal data. And that's how it knows it's a T-Mobile SIM. And to, um, it'll probably download like the T-Mobile app, but it's very important because this will get you the correct bands, 5G, 4G, 3G that you need to have to properly um, activate, um, have access to those to those um, towers and bands. So let's see if that, if that worked. Okay. Oh yeah, I did, because I couldn't even get to this setup page previously, see? Look, and it's got 5G up there in the top, and before it didn't have that, so. I guess that's all it is. Um, I'm, I'm assuming, I don't know if this is just for Galaxy devices or even just for this new Galaxy S series, <clears throat> excuse me, S23 series. Or I don't know if it's all Samsung devices moving forward or if Google's going to do this with all Android operating systems moving forward. I'm assuming it's manufacturer specific. Um, last time I got a brand new Samsung phone was literally a year ago. With the S22 Ultra. So I'm assuming this is going to be just for Samsung devices moving forward. When you're, when you're going to have to, when you put a, when you get a brand new phone or you factory reset a used phone. Just to get through the setup process to get you to the home screen. You're going to have to put a SIM card in there. Now here's a good question that I don't know. Let's say you bought a S23 Ultra from T-Mobile, the carrier. So, and let's say you've been using it for a few months and you want to sell it. So you factory reset it and then you find somebody that wants to buy it. Now, here's, here's a question that I don't know the answer to. If you factory reset a T-Mobile S23 Ultra, what, is it going to, is it going to, let's say you are, you, you actively factory reset it. You wipe the data towards brand new. Is it going to expect you to put in a T-Mobile SIM to get it, to get it back uh, through the setup process? Or could you just grab any spare old Verizon SIM like this one? That's probably six years old. Um, or even this one. Look, it's Verizon 4G LTE. I can't even see it here. That's 4G. That's before they even had 5G. So that's probably 10 years old. Like would any little SIM card do... My guess, just to get it to the home screen, because what if you didn't, don't have it? What if your buyer doesn't have the, for whatever reason, a T-Mobile SIM on them? Um, I My guess is it would work. I think any SIM would work. And again, you're not going to break something. Um, putting in an old SIM and you're not going to mess the phone up. You can always factory reset it or it'll re just reject it and say, no, you know, another SIM. So long story short, you're going to have to put a SIM card in here or an eSIM just to get through the setup process. And again, 
making this video because this is brand new. I've never seen something like this on an Android device ever. Normally, you could just fly through the setup process and um, go to the home screen, which was which is what I was attempting to do, and uh, got stumped. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this video out just to let uh, you all know what to expect when you get your new S23 Ultra. You have to have a SIM card. Now, any SIM card, I'm assuming, will do. So you just get a throwaway SIM. Preferably your active SIM out of your current working phone. Or um, have an eSIM ready to go. But you're going to have to put any SIM card in this phone. Or set it up with an eSIM just to get to the home screen or through the setup process. So if you're one of those people like me that just want to go to the home screen, mess around with it some, play with it some, transfer your data. And then the very last thing I do is put my SIM card in it. I get it set up and everything, and then I'll put my SIM in it. So this is kind of shock to me because I had to do the opposite. So, all right, so I guess we found the answer. Um, I'll just continue setting this up on my own. So I'm just going to ask me to set up the device. So I'm going to do that, and uh, we'll see you all next time. But if you have any questions, please um, comment down below, and I'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions. Pretty knowledgeable on this stuff, and, and if there is a certain specific question that I don't know, I will definitely find the answer for you. So um, I'm here at your disposal for all questions and all that good stuff. I have a lot of experience with this. So we will see you next time. Bye.